It, it's difficult. And that's the thing that I'm worried about. It's like, you know, no matter how much of a job you can also be doing as a parent. And, and to your point, this is why dua is important is that there is this this element of kind of unknown or where you don't really have full control. And this is a lesson for sure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's like teaching us that at the end of the day, no matter what, when all, you know, <laughs> push goes to shove, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control and we're not, right? And you can be the best of prophets, you can be the best of human beings, the best emulator in that sense, uh, but, you know, you can still have a son or a daughter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in your life to kind of test you um, who might not necessarily be on you know the straight path and and a lot of times it might not even come from your efforts as a parent but it can com come from environmental factors you know like the society as a whole or friends or whatever the case may be like the the story of Nuh alayhi salam right it's it's kind of like that where his own son didn't want to you know he guidance and a lot of the times it was probably because of the society that he was around and maybe the society's pressure was just too strong for him or kept pushing him away um so anyways you, you guys' thoughts on that so like beyond the realm of you being a parent should a parent also get involved when it comes to a, a you know a young person circles i know look for myself i can speak from experience my dad was pretty involved with my friends in the sense that he would vet them and there was a time where you know if we were eating my, my parent like my father specifically he would sit at the table and my friends would usually sit around him and you know he would get to know them and so on and so forth and like people will get to know my dad as well and it kind of helped a little bit kind of regulate who we hung, who, who we hung out with who we didn't hang out with and so on and so forth not that not to say that my dad was like literally you can't hang out with this dude but if someone was cool with my dad and my dad was cool with that person it kind of made us more comfortable with that person as a friend you guys get what i'm trying to say that's, that's interesting that your your dad did that i think that, that's like super important right like as a i think as a parent it's your responsibility to know your kids friends whether it's inviting them over, spending time, again, spending time, right? Whether it's spending time with your own kids or your kids' friends, that it makes such a huge difference. Um, it, it is, well, it's, it's pretty crazy if you think about, you know, that that type of model uh, when it comes to our, our kids' friends. But I don't think you could force friends, right? So I think, like, your dad's method, I forget, I'm not going to force you to become friends, but I'm going to get to know your friends because now I know them too. So I could tell you now, like, when I say something about your friend that he does this, Maybe I'm not telling you, hey, don't hang out with them, but hey, be careful about that because your friend is like X, Y, Z. You could at least give your kid advice. And it's validated because you know him, he knows him. So it's not like just coming out of nowhere where you're, your parents like, oh, that kid, like he looks like he's, a, he, he's troubled. Don't hang out with them. Like you're not going to have any impact on your kid that way, right? Uh, the other thing that, that, I would take it, that I would say is like we know the saying, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid. Now, not everybody has that opportunity or has that blessing, I would say, of maybe having family close by or friends, but doing that to the best of your ability, right? So if you can be close to family that you trust and that you know that will take, they'll help along that way because it does take a village. It's very hard in this day and age as a parent just to do all that on your own, right? To really be that constant influence for your kids. So having grandparents or your siblings or their uncles or aunts that you know that you trust, you trust their dean and stuff like that. If you don't necessarily have that, try to surround yourself around friends that have that that you could be around on a regular basis because your kid is also going to pick up a, a, with, with the people that you hang around with, right? Mm -hmm. And then trying to form those bonds. So I think that as a father or mother is also very important. So like for some people that's easy and it comes naturally to, to make friends and stuff like that. For some people it doesn't. So you have to make an extra effort to go in and form those. Uh, and because I, it's hard. I, I, I agree. And I think that if you want to make sure that your kid is spending eight hours with someone who's not harming him, you got to also watch out who you're putting your where you're putting your kids and that goes back to the Muslim school thing right like it doesn't need to be a Muslim school but a public school even a public school like go to those PTA meetings bro like meet your kids teacher like, get involved find out who they're with you know let, just to use an extreme example an extreme example if if my kids you know first grade teacher is Hitler you know what is Hitler teaching him for eight hours a day and I'm not saying that you're putting it it's, it's an extreme example but it's to drive the point home right do that to a much lesser degree to whatever degree this person you disagree with their morals how much time are they spending with them? And what are they imparting to your kid in that time? And teachers will always impart their morals on children. I was giving dawah all the time at John Bedevin. <laughs> all the time. Like, in any way that I can and get away with it, I would. I had this whole thing on, like, not sleeping together before marriage or why dating is stupid to a bunch of Christian kids. And their response was that their parents didn't care and the school didn't care. But I'm still giving dawah, bro, as best I can. Sure. No, that's solid. All right, so let's switch gears really quickly. Now... Um, do you guys feel like because we're talking about a lot of this stuff, there was this recent study that showed, I think it was about 70% or something like that of kids want to be YouTubers. 
Um, do you guys feel like the education system is adapting to this like changing narrative, this changing world, this changing perception uh, of what old jobs used to be like and what you know uh, careers used to be like and what careers are now, or where their interests lie at least with the youth? I, I want. I actually wanted Abdullah so, yeah, to talk so... about this because he had a really great presentation at the masjid about um, how the the promise that you're told by the education system is not all that, and how sometimes just doing your own thing is the better route. Um, I think that a lot of young people are starting to see that and starting to see the, 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 the lesser value of what a degree means. You think it's a good thing? I think it's a reality that schools need to adapt to when they're not. Like um, at the schools you teach, so the Islamic school you teach, are you guys teaching them how to code or create websites? Like how are you guys, um, yeah, basically, are you guys teaching them any different than what we were being taught 15 years ago? So... For example, Sohail, a friend of ours, was telling me that his daughter at a public school is now being taught. There's a new class called adulting and uh, they're being taught, for example, like here's what a credit card is. And here's what happens when you only pay the minimum payment on a credit card. Here's the debt you incur. Here's what compounded interest means. Here's what it means to say that the things you buy aren't actually free and you're just delaying the payment of your own money for these things that you're putting on your credit card. So these kinds of things I think are important. Um, in the Muslim school where I teach, they do have financial education, which is not at that level yet. Uh, Brother Luqman wants to start something called Gen Genie with us where he teaches them how to code in robotics and stuff, but it's not there yet. And I think part of the reason why we're probably a little bit further behind is again, because we're hiring teachers who got their degree 40 years ago from Algeria or Lebanon or anywhere. And so they, they're, they're not there. We don't have some young guy who just graduated from, from uni uh, because we, we can't pay him well enough. So I, at our school, it's not representative. Yeah. Uh, inshallah, it's changing. It's changing more and more, inshallah. So Luqman, inshallah, will be coming to JMC and doing it as like an after school thing. So that's cool. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, yeah, we, we got a long way to go, bro. Anas, do you know uh, how schools are so, right now? Like the secular schools? So if you like, look at elementary school, it's, it's a different story. I think all kids should go through elementary school and go through schooling, even in high school. The problem that I'm seeing, and I'm, I'm seeing it here, even at the youth center, is kids are coming and like literally, like again, we're creating a co-working space, so some of these kids come and work out of here and stuff. And most of them are college, some university level, and I would say like ninety percent of them are like thinking of dropping out or dropping out. And I'm like, what's going on here? And like, look, I come from an entrepreneurial background. I own my own business and stuff like that. I am 50-50 about the, um, you know, the benefits uh, of school or university or higher education. In general, I will still promote it 90% uh, of the time. I would say the use case for people to go and do their own thing is a smaller use case. Because mm -hmm. we know that 9 out of 10 businesses fail starting up, right? And most people don't have the aptitude, the drive to be able to build their own business. A lot of people can, but it's not for everybody. And I would say it's not for the majority. Uh, with that being said... Like what I was noticing with a lot of these kids is less about them wanting to go. Like a lot of them just have this thing. I want to go drive a Lambo and stuff like that. So I just want to make, make a, bit, a bunch of money. So I'm trying to reframe that. I'm like, don't just start a business because you want to make a bunch of money. Think about the impact you have. Like if I start a business, it's not just about me. I can employ people. I can give people a, a livelihood, which is, which, is, which is a very noble thing to do. The other side of that that I would say is that for a lot of them, they just like don't want to put in the effort for school. Mm -hmm. Right? They just, they just like, oh, it's too hard. I don't have any interest. And they just drop out because they don't want to put the effort, right? It's like, oh, the easier path is like, I could now go start a marketing agency and it's just like, you know, I can make a couple of bucks. And it's, it's enough to enough to survive it and maybe I can make, make that into a living, right? So like, I definitely don't want to promote that type of behavior and mentality of just like giving up because like, hey, it's too hard. I don't have the, the, the mental aptitude or fortitude to just like see this thing through. Because that's also creating other problems down the line, right? Yeah. Now, should you do this school for the for the sake of doing school? I would say for some people, no. But for some people, maybe yes. And this, this is a hard question to answer just as a universal, give you a yes or no. Uh, but I would say more so than not, most of these kids should be going through school uh, in some form or another. The problem comes is like they have zero idea of going out of high school. Not all, but a lot of kids, and especially you're seeing this more so in males and females, of like what direction to go in. They finish high school, it's like, okay, I'm going into college. They have no idea what they want to do from a university perspective or beyond that, right? So yes, schools might need to adapt. And schools are adapting, by the way. So you, you'll see this maybe less so at the college level, but especially at the university level, programs are adapting. Are they adapting as fast as they should be? No, but they are changing. I have seen that.